Uh, coming up, we have stories about Christmas and puppies, a wedding dress thief, a family drama, kicking out friends for eating sushi, beige aesthetics, pranks, and petty revenge, the shipping version. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for telling my sister-in-law I adopted my dog, not her? And she can spend Christmas elsewhere if she's scared of my dog. I mean, it doesn't really need much further explanation, does it? My 30 female brother, James, 34, is married to Sylvia, 33. Not sure if this is relevant, but Sylvia is saying it is, so I'm including it. She grew up and aged out of foster care. Me, my husband, James and Sylvia, and my parents were meant to go to my parents' house for the holidays, but unfortunately, they had issues with their plumbing, and their house is now unheated. So they're staying with me and my husband, and the celebrations are now at our home. This has upset Sylvia because we have a dog. Sylvia has trauma relating to large dogs, and as such is petrified of my dog. He is a very large rescue dog. We are working on retraining and socializing him, but so far he's been fine around most people. She knows all of this, but she's still scared and saying that she won't be comfortable staying in the house with the dog. She suggested we send him to a boarding kennel for the holidays, which I am unwilling to do. He is not good with new environments or unfamiliar men, and the house is his home. I don't see a reason to remove him from the environment because of Sylvia's issues, which have nothing to do with him. The family was split on this and arguing in the group chat, and Sylvia sent a message saying that, as family, we should accommodate her. I replied saying that I have a responsibility to my dog, that I adopted my dog, not her, and that if she can't deal with it, then she needs to spend the holidays elsewhere. This kicked off an argument because Sylvia said I was weaponizing her background, which I don't think I was. My point was that I accepted responsibility for my dog, for his well-being and his comfort, and frankly, the safety of others around him. I have no such responsibility for Sylvia. My mother is saying I shouldn't have used those words, as I should have known it would be triggering for her. My dad is on my side. James is now saying Sylvia doesn't feel welcome at Christmas, even though I've told him she is very welcome to come to the home as is. I'm just not removing the dog. Am I the astronaut for making that point to her? Edit for everyone asking why we can't keep the dog in another room, we offered. The visit is supposed to be several days, but we offered to keep the dog separated. But Sylvia said she will be anxious the whole time knowing he's here. She said any barking or howling will trigger her, and that she won't be able to sleep knowing he's in the house. <sighs> oh, family. Coming in for the holidays and staying with you because the plumbing somehow magically... Didn't work at the parents' house. It's funny how those magical home repairs seem to happen around the holidays, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay, so um, I have thoughts. Candy Thunder left some thoughts here as well. Here's Candy Thunder's thoughts. Pets are family. You can't just remove them from their home. If you have issues with the house you are staying at for free, then it is on you to go to a hotel or make other arrangements, not on OP to remove her dog from her home. She did not weaponize sister-in-law's past by saying she was not removing her dog from her home. She offered alternatives, but sister-in-law declined. Go to a hotel. I would further this and say that if anyone weaponized their past, it was sister-in-law. Was it not? No background was ever referenced, not even in the slightest way. Was it referenced at all? This was a very simple black and white situation. I have a responsibility to my dog, just as I, I would have a responsibility to my own child. If you asked me to remove my child from my home for, for the holidays, I would say, uh, not just go to a hotel, but go to hell. Go to the hell hotel. If you have a problem, it's a you problem. You can't put that problem on everyone else to solve to accommodate you if it, if it requires moving a member of the family out. You're, you're talking you're talking about asking asking the host to to endure some great inconvenience. And what she suggested boarding their dog. So paying money to board their dog and putting the dog in a situation that would be much more uncomfortable for the animal than it would be for her to sleep in a room where she was segregated from the animal for X period of time, or better yet, more uncomfortable than her going and staying in a hotel. 
and coming over during the day for the activities and the dog being segregated during that time, it is a her problem. And if she wants to spend the holidays being around this family, she's either going to have to accept it or accept the conditions and choose to not be a part of it. NTA. And the specific question again was, am I the astronaut for telling my sister-in-law that I adopted my dog, not her, and she can spend Christmas elsewhere if she's scared of my dog? Even if she had some direct traceable traumatic event with a large animal, the situation would be no different. And she's going to run up against situations like this in her life later on. And she's going to have to find a way to navigate through those situations as well. I don't think her hubby was extremely helpful to anybody in this situation. If this were a situation where Candy Thunder had some kind of deep rooted issue with a large animal, which she does not. Um, if, if I were the spouse in this situation, I would feel beholden to help navigate these waters. It wasn't really doing any good there. You guys are staying there for free. Get a freaking hotel. If you're not comfortable with it, it is that simple. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Laughing at My Brother's Girlfriend After She Asked Me Why None of Us Like Her? My 20 female's brother, Mark 23 male, has been with his girlfriend, 22 female Jane, for a year. She is one of the most passive-aggressive, snarky people you will ever meet. Her middle name is Petty. The thing that caused our family to keep her at arm's length was when she got mad at our mom for accommodating our younger sister's autism and not force feeding her as well as allowing her to read at the table, something that calms her down. She got on mom's arse for enabling an entitled brat. Oh, shit. Another example was when my mom supported Mark's decision to get the tattoo he had been saving up for for years. Jane proceeded to call mom up to complain that he had made the deposit with his hard-earned saved money and had an appointment set. She told mom that she wasn't going to allow this emotional incest anymore and that she's happy to make an appointment for all of us for family therapy as this enmeshment is making her uncomfortable. The Okay, we're going to red flag that. Seems like she might be taking things a bit far. She has continued to make comments like these, specifically to mom, and it's disgusting how little respect she has for pretty much everyone but herself. She's not been invited to Christmas this year, but Mark is. It's unclear what they're planning to do yet. Hold up. How long have they been together? One year. A few days ago, Jane called me as mom had blocked her. She said she was three months pregnant and went on a long rant about the family dynamic. She then asked, why don't you all like me? I laughed out of pure shock and asked if she was serious. She didn't even respond. It just said, I'll call you when you're in the mood to be more mature and hung up. Hold on. <laughs> I'll call you when you're in the mood and in, in the mood to be more mature. Click. This is but wasn't by hanging up, wasn't she immature? I told mom about the situation and she's on my side, but Mark is fuming at me for laughing at Jane's question and angry at mom for being on my side. Mom just told him that he needs to talk to Jane about her constant comments and insults and she's expecting an apology. Mark won't talk to me and Jane blocked my number. A-I-T-A. Also, the tattoo has nothing to do with our mom. It's an octopus up his arm that my brother designed himself. He does art and wanted to be a tattoo artist. Okay, so you've got someone who has uh, weaseled their way into your family. No one likes her because she has an abrasive personality and doesn't realize it or does and just doesn't care. Uh, but the bigger problem now is that she's she's preggers and mark now is sticking up for her and is mad at everybody who is attacking her which you know is probably a natural response to her being pregnant and him saying oh shit um this is real now I, i've got to focus on the family that i'm creating which i halfway commend him for but him knowing about the oil and water mixture with with her and his family and then staying with her and allowing this thing to develop and allowing the whole situation to just become worse and worse and worse has gotten it to the point where it is now. I really NTA, by the way, NTA for laughing at her. She's an, she's an abrasive person 
who asked a simple answer, who asked a simple question. See, words are hard. She asked a simple question. Uh, the, the question was just a ludicrous one. It was simple, but the answer was laughter. This is a case of if you don't want an honest answer, don't ask the question. Don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to. And the answer in this case was laughter because you have been so abrasive to everyone in the entire family. You have interjected yourself in situations that you have no say in whatsoever. You have offended nearly every person in this family that you have touched. And yet you don't know why people don't like you. How self unaware can you be? How? And Mark, Mark, I feel like I feel like I need to have a talk with Mark here because if he is going to focus on the family that he's created now, which I suggest he does because they're they're having a baby now. Um, either his his new family that he's creating is going to end up being segregated and no contact from his family, which is the most likely path here. Family isn't going to be able to do invites, just him and the baby moving forward. We've read stories like that, and it's a, if you don't want to have a relationship with the mom, you don't really get to have a relationship with the kids. It is going to end up being a very painful situation once that baby is born. It's going to be way more complex at that point because OP's side of the family here is going to be like, we'd really like to have a relationship with this kid, but we can't stand this person. What do we do? And now it's very difficult. I do think there is a lot of responsibility on Mark's shoulders now to try to navigate the situation and try to find some common ground and try to rebuild this bridge or there was never a bridge there in the first place. It's like she just came in guns a blazing and uh, and just she just never attempted to build any kind of positive relationship with anybody in the family. So, Mark, it's on you, buddy. If there's going to be some kind of relationship between your new family and your existing family, it is on you to create it or be siloed. I don't know. This is going to get this is going to get sticky. But the single little situation where where the super abrasive girlfriend, soon to be baby mama, uh, asked this question and OP laughed is NDA. You got much bigger problems here, though. And not you, OP. I'm talking to your brother. I'm talking. Well, I'm talking to the whole family. There are a lot bigger problems here than this one thing. And Mark, if you were distracted by this one thing and and by your sister laughing at the question and offending your your girlfriend here uh you are distracted by the wrong thing as well yeah Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with yet another Reddit story for you, and this one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for Kicking My Friend and Her Husband Out for Eating Slash Wasting My Food? I, female 34, made the mistake of allowing my best friend, Mary, female 33, her husband, Carl, male 27, and two kids to crash at my place after showing up without being invited. Since she showed up for a visit and later complained that it was too late to drive back home five hours. Huh. So people just show up to visit unannounced and then they're like, ah, you know what? It's too late to drive. I think we're just going to crash here. Hmm. I hate having people over and she has a history of being a moocher. However, we did have a great time. So in the end, I was grateful for her visit and it was raining. I agreed to let her spend the night safely at my place. I did not go crazy with accommodations because I didn't want her to get too comfortable. So I opened the sofa bed for them and went to sleep. My boyfriend went into the bathroom near midnight and woke me up looking angry and confused. He said that Mary and her husband were having an unauthorized food orgy in our kitchen. I immediately went there and found her by the dinner table with all of our trays of sushi laying around while she was sampling it and handing it to her husband. The wastebasket was right next to them because he was taking a bite and spitting it out if he didn't like it. Oh no! My sushi sampler tray was left with just a few pieces and most of my boyfriend's tray was thrown away by them without even asking my permission to eat it. They had also cut cut a brand new and store sealed artisan cake and opened juice cartons straight from the pantry despite me having left juice in the refrigerator in case they wanted some. They done did it. They crossed the line. They took the cake. Come back for more of this. And you know what? We're going to do one of these two because... We're not even done with the story. They just, they, you know, they, there's mooching 
And then there's this. I don't know why. There's got to be a term for this. There's got to be a term for this where they just show up and they're like, you know what? It's, uh, it's too late to it's too late to leave. We're just gonna crash here. And then, uh, uh, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and eat everything in your fridge. Uh, you know what? We're gonna open all this brand new stuff, including the cake. You dicks. The garbage bin had lots of chewed rice. It looked like someone had chewed and sucked it for flavor tasting and then spit it out. I found this especially infuriating as I left those dishes to the back of the fridge and inside two tightly knotted bags for privacy in her own home. I served them dinner. I showed her where the bread and sandwich supplies could be found in case they needed anything. I don't understand why she wanted to take more than she was given. I also found a complete box of chocolates gifted by my boyfriend, emptied out, and an entire six pack of Coca-Cola all gone into the garbage. Her excuse was wanting her husband to have a taste of nice things because he's not familiar with sushi and she has always talked about the food I like to buy. I immediately kicked her out. She begged because it was 12 a.m. and said they would leave very early in the morning. I went to bed crying in anger. I woke them up at almost 4 a.m., she started clicking her tongue like a sleepy cartoon character, and her husband protested that it was too early. I pulled the sheets from him and had them leave. As clarification, they both have jobs, and shame on me for allowing her to come in because I've had to create boundaries with her multiple times because of showing up unannounced, playing the I lost my wallet game when the check comes at restaurants, and constantly trying to stiff me with bills. She called me hours later, but I didn't pick up, so she left a message. She said I spoiled her Christmas because her intent was to come visit her family living nearby, but by having to go back home, they couldn't contact family members to ask them to let them in because it was too early. So she and her husband had a fight, and they drove back, and now he only wants to spend their 10-day vacation with his own family. She sent me another message a few hours later. She said that he's still very angry because he had to drive while groggy, and that being sleepy causes him to be grouchy all day. She said he's so mad at her that he moved his stuff to another bedroom. I know when she's lying and her tears sounded really desperate. She's begging me to call him and talk to him, but I don't want to and I won't do it. I sent her a cash request for 500 US dollars to cover the sushi trays, the cake and the other food plus replacements. Also for inconveniencing me and their night over. It sounds petty, but I'm still fuming. She whined and cried, but paid for it, then said that because of me, her kids won't have Christmas. Clarification, I cited them for abuse of trust and hospitality when I kicked them out. I wouldn't have minded if they made sandwiches or took from the already open juice cartons, which were almost full, but I cannot forgive what they did and for the food waste. I already blocked them after telling her that we are no longer friends via text. She sent a friend I hardly know to talk some sense into me and whom I told to go themselves he says that what i did was over the top because not only did i scold i kicked her out and announced the end of our friendship but i made her pay me money am i the ass cannot top comment here nta they were chewing up your food and spitting it out in the trash at midnight in your house i wouldn't have let them stay until 4 a.m i would have bounced them at midnight before they started gnawing on the walls what the fudge this they sound effing feral uh, yeah, this is definitely an NTA. And whenever OP was saying I kicked them out, I was expecting them to be gone at that point. But then she says, then I woke them up at 4 a.m. And I was like, wait, so you kicked them out. But like, but you didn't kick them out. You gave them like a, a checkout time or you just said, I'm tomorrow morning. You're gone. So it wasn't like an immediate kicking of the outing. These people sound atrocious. I'm shocked that she paid shocked that she paid this $500 request just like color me flabbergasted who who else was just absolutely shocked that that this mooching friend paid that i know they both have jobs but this behavior is not indicative of someone who has the means to or or the the inclination to pay that request it's the most shocking thing of everything here. Yeah, they ruined you ruined my kids Christmas. They came to town to visit family for the holidays. So if at this point she doesn't already have that taken care of, she wouldn't have paid it. If this was going to ruin Christmas for her kids, she would not have paid it. I do not understand showing up at somebody's house, um, just deciding that you're going to sleep there. And apparently she had their their two kids with her the whole time, too. 
this is, I don't, under, I don't understand the fact that this friend showed up with her two kids. Yeah. The two kids crashed there too. So the kids are just there. I don't know how old they are, but, but this friend, Mary, Mary and Carl and their two kids, they just drag them around from couch to couch, mooching off of people. Is that what happens? Here? Because that's not okay. And that's probably a CPS phone call waiting to happen. Right. And where were the kids this whole time that they were raiding the sushi the sushi bar in the fridge and eating the cake and down in six packs of Coca-Cola and living the good life here. And she did all this because she wanted him to have a taste of nicer things. Why are you friends with this person? How did you become friends with this person? OP? I have questions out of all this, the whole friggin' story. There's so many shocking things, but the most shocking thing by far is the fact that she actually paid that $500 request. The mental scar of, of seeing someone like, Suck the flavor out of your sushi rice and spit it into the trash can. Also, the cake, by the way, of course, they went way too flipping far with the freaking cake. But everything else that they did, I just don't understand. And they did it all with their kids with them. This is like a non lovable version of Cousin Eddie's family. Cousin Eddie's family is like is lovable. And I think at the core, like good people. These are like the, the shitty 2023 version of Cousin Eddie's family. But the shitty version. Did I mention that they're shitty? Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Refusing to Pay a Friend Who Paid for My Wedding Dress? I don't know. Wedding drama. Prepare yourselves. Hey, Reddit, I was looking to buy this dress from a brand in New York City. New York City? Man, I'm really dating myself with that. Because I'm not based there, the only option was to go through a retailer where I'm based, and that would cost 2.4K, excluding alterations. I found a listing from Still White, and it was the exact dress I wanted in my size and brand new. The previous owner had canceled her wedding for $900. My longtime friend from school, S, who happened to be in New York at the time, agreed to pick it up for me and bring it back with her to where I'm based, where she's also from. I was really grateful and happy, and I was even intending to gift her $100 on top of the Uber rides to and from the place I said I would reimburse as my token of appreciation. However, my joy turned to shock slash horror slash dismay slash disbelief when I saw S's Instagram story showcasing her trying on my wedding dress. Oh, no. I mean, I don't think there's a person here. I don't think there's anybody here watching the stream right now, seeing this video. I don't think there's anybody seeing this that's like, yes, that's completely okay. No one thinks that's okay. Everybody knows the rules. And even if that's not a written rule, common sense and respect dictate that you not try on someone else's wedding dress unless they ask you to or give you explicit permission to and you have some kind of written or recorded proof of this lest you be shunned by the rest of the world this is one of those tarred and feathered kind of offenses it's a rule written that's older than time itself what are you thinking I called her out for it, telling her I wasn't happy that she not only tried it on without my permission, but posted it for the public to see. Oh, yeah. Didn't even think about that part yet. Not just that she tried it on, but it's that she showed the world OP's wedding dress first. Which means she had the cojones to not just put it on, but to be like, click, post. <laughs> She didn't take it down even after a conversation we had about this. To make matters worse, she admitted she collected the dress posing as me. Through an email bill later, I noticed that the dress had also been altered. What the fuck? On the spot, all without my knowledge or consent. Oh my God, she tried it on and did a fitting right there and they altered it to her. This just gets better and better and better. Also, more red flags. When confronted, S nonchalantly stated that it was her one chance to try on a wedding gown and insisted that I should get over it and reimburse her for the $900 she paid for the dress. 
My wedding dress experience was entirely hijacked. I'm now hesitant to pay her back. This all happened yesterday and she reached out today to ask for the money back and told me to get over it because she needs to make a big purchase tomorrow and it would help her cash flow. Since she wants it so bad, she can now have it. Am I the astronaut? We have an update. There is an update to the story before we get into the update. What do you think? She broke the wedding laws. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know. She's an ask on one. There, no doubt here. Uh, Opie's friend is a self-absorbed ask on one twat. That's right. I said it. Terrible person. Terrible person. And the get over it is the icing on the cake. Get over it. Excuse me? Again, OP, like, how did you become friends with this person? Was there a terrible person convention at the hotel that you just happened to be staying at? And you guys bumped into each other at the hotel bar and you're like, let's be besties. And she was like, I'm, I'm a terrible person. And you were like, yeah, that's fine. Could you pick up a dress for me in New York City? If there is some kind of legal, legal ground to stand on, I would definitely fight it. Until then... Hell no, don't pay her for the dress. She destroyed it. She not only destroyed the intent with it because it was a wedding dress that she just went ahead and showed the world, right? It's, it's, it has no purpose now. It has no purpose. But she also had it altered. And I think if anything, she may have a case because she had it altered. She actually had it adjusted to her body. That one act right there may be the tipping point. At minimum, she's just a shite person ask on one. But there might actually be some legal ground to stand on here. And her impersonating her is another legal layer to this. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's all. Maybe that's all she needs. She impersonated her, picked up the dress, had them do an alteration right there on the freaking spot on her while impersonating her. That probably undoes all of it. Fraud. Destruction of property. Assholery. Bullshittery. Twattery. Guilty, guilty, guilty. You can't handle the truth. All right, let's dive into the update here. Oh, my goodness. Update December 16th, 2023, which was the next day. First of all, thank you, everyone, for being so empathetic and indignant on my behalf. I don't feel crazy anymore. When I saw her post, I completely lost it. I cried so pathetically. I know everyone must be wondering why I am even friends with S and how that reflects on me as a person, too. It's like she can read our freaking minds. S and I go a long way back. I have always known S as a shitty friend, but I still keep her around because of her mental health struggles. I was the only friend connected to her family, so if anything, I would have been the one to sound the alarm. I don't think I could have lived with the guilt if anything really happened to S. But, well, I guess my job is done because S's audacity tells me she's in a much better place. Good for her. Moving forward, I don't have the dress in hand yet because it's still in New York with her. Well, then why the hell would you give her the money for it anyway? Until you can physically inspect it? She is coming back to where we're based February 24th. I agree that she was doing me a favor, and for that I think it will still pay her for the dress. After all, it is $900, but with the following terms. I will only pay her upon receipt of the dress. Thank you. The trust is completely broken. I don't know what else she might have done to the dress. Sleep in it? I unfortunately need this leverage over her until I have it in my hands, else she has no incentive to keep her hands off of it. Yeah. For all I know, she chucked it in dusty storage to spite me. I feel like the way you're using the word dusty there is, uh, I I'm slightly offended. Two, I will pay her the $900 minus the cost of dry cleaning and alterations. Touche. It's like borrowing a friend's clothing and not washing it before returning it. Did I mention she also tried it after her Pilates class without showering? Ha ha. Oh, no. I think this arrangement is fair and I would not owe her anything. Three, I will end this friendship. To be honest, I think if S and I met as adults, we wouldn't be friends. The friendship has ran its course and I think I did the best I could in this friendship, if that's what FS stands for. She for real said I'm pulling an Anna Sorokin on her. S called me a con artist and isn't even sorry that she rained all over my parade. Friend? Human? Hold on. She, she said she's... Anna, like inventing Anna. <laughs> I'm sorry. My dress is very VIP. The money's coming. I'll have my dad wire it in the morning. It's very VIP. Get over it. Yeah, but that's what she's... No. If anybody's Anna here, it's the person who impersonated someone else. You nasty biznatch. Four, she's uninvited. Need I say more? 
Nah, I think OP, you're handling this all very well. And apparently she's had enough time to like coolly and calmly reflect on all of her options. Not once did she mention a legal path in here. I think if her friend S henceforth now known as Anna, Anna, well, Anna, we'll go Anna, inventing Anna. Henceforth, S shall be known as Anna. If, if Anna did buck this offer in any way, if she fought this, if she tried to press, I mean, right now she's the one without $900 on her hand and she has the dress, right? So when she hands the dress over, OP is going to have to determine the cost of the dry cleaning and alterations, which she can probably estimate ahead of time. So she could like inspect it and give her cash on hand right there. And that may be the end of it. If, if S slash Anna here, um, bucks that at all this could elevate to to a legal standing i don't think s slash on it will let it get to that point i don't think it will get there also also um i don't know how many points i lose for for not being able to get the picture of blake lively out of my head the whole time while i was reading this because she kept saying the word s and i was like serena and it was gossip girl and i was like xoxo i'll never tell I'm sure I lose several points for that, but but the whole time, every time I saw the word S, I'm like, well, yeah, because Serena's crazy. She's going through her crazy phase, yo. So yes, uh, friend is definitely an Ascon one here. We've already determined that. Opie is NTA here. We've already determined that. She's got, she. if you knew this was a shitty friend, like hey, this seems like a, a, a big mission to give a shitty friend, right? I think if, if Opie did anything wrong here, it was giving a, a critical mission to a shitty friend. It's your freaking wedding dress. Why would you ever trust a shitty friend to handle something that important? And she's learned a valuable lesson here. Don't give shitty friends big missions. Yes. So, um, yeah, don't do that. But NTA here. And I'm sorry you had to deal with this shit. Uh, hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for telling my sister that what I give her kids should have nothing to do with her preferences and that they deserve to be happy? I-17 female have a... Hold up. OP's 17. Let's keep that in mind. I-17 female have a sister, Rebecca, 29 female, who has three kids, Lori, 8 female, Cammie, 7 female, and Trey, 7 male. I babysit them, and they are really good kids. I like to bring over toys when I babysit. All of their favorites are dolls. We also like watching shows and movies from doll brands. Rebecca is a vlogger with the whole beige aesthetic. It isn't my style, but it's not my business either. Now that I have a job and get paid for babysitting, plus a store discount for what I buy there, it is the first year I can really buy people gifts on my own for Christmas. Most of it I got months ago. I got each of Rebecca's kids two dolls and something extra. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I got Lori a signature Monster High G3 Frankie doll, a Winter Poppy Rainbow High doll, and a Rainbow Dash necklace. I got Cammie a Neon Frights G3 Monster High Torally doll, and a LOL OMG doll, I don't know the name, with a kind of a camo outfit and a poppet purse. I got Trey, a Rainbow High Dahlia, a Disney Tiana Ballet doll, and Lisa Frank stickers. All of these are child-friendly and cater to what they like, which I would know from my time with them. When Rebecca heard I got them gifts, she wanted to see them. I showed her, and she said that I should have known them. She used the word us. Better than that, and not to have gotten these things. She told me to return them, which I can't return most of it due to how and when I got them, and get something else and that before i buy it i approve it with her i got mad and asked what was wrong with what i got and she called them disgusting said that they don't fit in with anything i told her that she might not be into those things but they aren't for her so her preferences aren't a factor and that her kids deserve to be happy she got mad and said that they are happy and stormed out our mom is siding with rebecca and said that if i really don't want to buy something else i can just sign on with her gifts I really don't want to. I got them gifts that they deserve to have, and I don't understand why I shouldn't just give them to them, but I could be wrong. No one is agreeing with me. 
there is a little update here, but uh, but let's chat for a second because I don't know what the beige aesthetic thing is. So in the intro, when I was like, it sounds it sounds like an insult of some kind. Uh, apparently, this is this is a content theme that I am unaware of. What is beige aesthetic? You know what? I should have just asked Candy Thunder. Candy Thunder, help me out here. What what is the beige aesthetic? Everything is beige. Walls, toys, clothes, everything, everything, everything. So okay. So she doesn't like the aesthetic of the things. Couldn't they? Everything has to match this style, toys included. That is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard in my entire life. Also, couldn't they just still get the toys? And don't they have like a beige toy crate or a chest or something that they can put them in to match the aesthetic? If she happens to be blogging and taking a picture in their room at the freaking time, like there is no way that you could make everything in a kid's life beigey. And expect them to be happy. You can't. Oh, Candy Thunder sending me an image now to to uh, further her point here. Oh, <sighs> you know. Okay, it's so freaking limiting, and to aesthetically limit what your kids can be into because you want it to match the palette of your home is bonkers. It sounds like priorities are a little bit out of whack. Now, like the second picture you sent me here, Candy Thunder, um, which is here. I'll at least hold it up real quick. So it's yeah, it's all it's all beigey stuff, right? It's all minimalist be- beige baby toys, that kind of thing. Baby stuff is a little bit different, right? Because, uh, well, no, not really, because contrast is is important for for babies, uh, especially in the early formative times that's why a lot of the learning tools are black and white contrast is important but when it's when it's baby stuff younger kid stuff like you can get in whatever color so whatever but when you get into dolls and that kind of thing like they aren't allowed to be into something because it doesn't match the aesthetic of what she's trying to show the world screw her this is ridiculous it is ridiculous and limiting and the fact that someone can place that over the happiness of their children genuinely pisses me off at maximum, put it in your beige toy tote when you don't want it to be out to be seen by the rest of the flipping world. You can't ask someone to take a gift back because it doesn't match your home aesthetic. Get over yourself. You had kids. This is part of the deal. They're messy. Not everything's going to match. There's a lot of randomly different things. But if you lean into the stuff that they're really into, it is so flipping rewarding to let them explore those things. Mom here is holding them back. You know what happens when you hold kids back from exploring things? They flip out. The rebellion that these children are going to trigger at some point is going to be like Monty Python worthy. It is going to be a journey. It is going to be a quest. They're like wild horses, man. Why would you be so flippin' limiting? Okay, there's an update here. Update, I will keep the gifts for when I watch them. I might look into natural colored slime or craft kits. I don't want the toys to be thrown away. Not only do I want the kids to enjoy them, but throwing them away is wasteful and bad for the environment. For people saying they would throw them in the trash, at least donate them or something. The issue isn't with her. The issue isn't with her sexualizing the toys or thinking that they will affect body image. Oh, it's purely aesthetic. So, yeah, that doesn't help. That doesn't help her sister, the mom's case at all in this this is this is garbage um the question here was am i the astronaut for telling my sister that what i give her kids should have nothing to do with her preferences and that they deserve to be happy you are not the asshole for that your sister's an asshole where would you put controlling beige aesthetic sister on the scale here She's not even allowing them. She's limiting them. She's not allowing them to be into what they want to be into. She's she's extremely limiting for them. Yep. Sis has taken a trip all the way up to the uh, kind of mauve, not really beige planet. Ascon one. Um, I mean, there, there's some beige in there, but she's just, you know, she's in the, the in the middle kind of pinky mauvey part. You know, I've got no problem with kids being a part of like family themed social media stuff as long as it is it doesn't change or divert something about them as long as it doesn't limit them in some way or limit what they're allowed to be into. This is this this is a whole new level. But even the part that I don't understand and I've said it a few times here is that even if it is an aesthetic, even if 
you know, what is out in the room has to all match. Like there's no way that everything that they own is going to match this. That's just not sustainable. It's not sustainable at all. Are they allowed to buy freaking deodorant that has like a, a blue casing? Which is what about toothpaste? What about toothbrushes? Like what, what is included into this? There is no flipping way that everything can work into this palette. Can't you just put it away into some kind of container that does fit into the palette. Why does it have to be a can't own? I just don't, I just don't understand. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Ruining My Sister-in-Law's Birthday Dinner Because She Encouraged Her Kids to Pull a Prank? Longer version, my husband and I, 38 female, went to my sister-in-law's house for her birthday. It's quite a long drive, and so we drove up the day before and stayed overnight in their spare room. The birthday meal was going to be midday. She has two kids, aged four and seven. Husband and I were in separate cars as we were coming from different workplaces to get there. I am very short-sighted and literally can't see one foot in front of my face without my glasses. Every night, I'd take them off and put them on the nightstand right where I know I can reach them in the morning. Now, apparently, sister-in-law thought it would be a funny prank to get her kids to sneak into the room. I sleep with earplugs in because my husband is a loud snorer and take and hide my glasses. On the morning of her birthday, I couldn't find my glasses on the nightstand. I asked my husband to help in case they had fallen off or under the bed or something, but we couldn't find them anywhere. I was really distraught because, as I said, I'm literally almost non-functional without them. Husband helped me down to breakfast, and I explained that I wouldn't be able to take part in the midday meal nearby restaurant and couldn't drive myself home. I was really upset. There are also expensive glasses because I have to get the lenses thinned, etc., so about 600 pounds. Glasses be expensive. Literally, nearly caused someone to go blind with the prank. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Sister-in-law let this go on until they were literally about to go for her birthday lunch. I had not been able to do much at all up until this point because I can't see. Then she jokingly said to her kids, okay, that's enough. Go get them. And the kids ran off to fetch my glasses from where they had hidden them. She said not to blame them at all. I don't ish. And then said it was her idea and just a bit of harmless fun, except for the harm part. I put my glasses on, got in my car, said nothing at all and just drove home. My husband is on my side and has apologized on sister-in-law's behalf, saying that she thought I would see the funny side. It's got to be an unintentional pun. The better unintentional pun pun would be that she didn't see it. He is very apologetic and offered to skip her birthday meal as well and come home. But he is being apologetic, not her. I've had nothing from sister-in-law except an angry WhatsApp message to the group, not directly to me, but to the family group, saying that her birthday had been ruined because someone couldn't take a joke. Apparently, after I left, she had a meltdown about how the day was ruined because I drove off and the kids were upset. It is genuinely distressing for me to not be able to see, but I see, exclamation point, she got the pun there, how she might have thought this would be funny to get her kids to do. Am I the astronaut? Edit, I feel bad that the kids think that they're the reason that I was upset or that they did something wrong. Edit to answer some questions. Husband and I were traveling in different cars as we had set off from different locations and timings. We went the night before so we wouldn't have to get up early and do the long drive first thing. I'm not blind, but the world is just a blur from about arm's length or less without glasses. So I can function, just not do anything useful, and it's a pain in the ass. Yes, my husband looked for the glasses, but I didn't do much in the morning because I just sort of sat and was bothered about how I'd get to the restaurant, how'd I get the car home, etc. I wasn't going to be of any use in actually looking for them for obvious reasons. We looked in the obvious places, which to be fair was next to the bed because they're the last thing I take off before turning out the light and it would be effing weird for them to be in the kitchen or somewhere because how would I have got upstairs? Anyway, top comments. She is a bully. She enjoyed torturing you. You don't pull this prank on someone you like. This is something you do to be mean and cruel with plausible deniability. Laughing at someone struggling because of a disability is atrocious. Next comment. Exactly. Would she hide her husband's crutches if his leg was broken? Would she hide her Graham's hearing aids if she was deaf? This was a cruel prank and to involve children while dragging it on for hours is especially egregious. NTA. 
Uh, definitely NTA here for... Let's go back to the... It doesn't even matter what the initial question was. The initial question was, though, am I the astronaut for ruining my sister-in-law's birthday dinner because she encouraged her kids to pull a prank? Uh, you, you, you didn't ruin it. You had enough respect for yourself to know that you had been severely wronged and um, and left rather than pretend that it was okay. Uh, now, look, uh, I come from a family of pranksters and uh, there are pranks that cross lines. This one, even if it was, you know, it could have been funny for a few minutes tops. But the fact that she let it drag on for half the day to the point where there's no way that you could actually go to this thing. It's like she was she was excluding you through a prank trying to. How are you supposed to get ready? How are you supposed to, you know, take a shower, fix your hair, do your makeup, do whatever. If you can't see, she didn't come clean until they were walking out the door or they were getting ready to walk out the door, giving you no time to get ready and prepare for this at all. So she was naturally just excluding you from this event and masking it as a a prank, as a joke, as a harmless prank by having her small children do it. That's double shitty on her part. Even if she meant it to be, I don't know. I can't say that we, we, I can't say that I, I think she meant it to be harmless here at all because it's, it's wrapped in so many layers of, of transparent bullshit. How bad is it? That's the question. And the innocent kids who thought this was a game now feel like shit because their mom is terrible. You know, so I'm, I'm torn between two and one. So many markers in here though. Using the kids to do it, letting it drag on for as long as she did, not coming clean until they were getting ready to leave for the event, thereby excluding her from going to the event, then getting pissed off that she had a reaction to it and victimizing herself, saying that she ruined the day. Yeah, that's an ask on one thing. That's an ask on one thing. If she had said, oh, she took it way harsher than I intended and called her up and apologized to it. Um and hadn't broadcasted that she was now the victim of this somehow, and it had ruined her birthday, that would be a different story because she would have handled it like an adult and obviously had some remorse there. There was zero remorse shown. Zero. Zero remorse shown. Zero Fs given. Zero things keeping you from ASCON 1. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with yet another Reddit story for you. This one is from Petty Revenge. Heck yeah. And is titled, I returned my neighbor's new laptop to the shipping office. My neighbor and I aren't friends, but we wave when passing in vehicles or walking. About a year ago, my wife had ordered something for one of our kids and it was delivered to the wrong house. Our house numbers are mailboxes. Our house numbers and mailboxes are very similar and easy to confuse. Picture 668 and 688. After a couple of days, I called and they sent me the photo taken of the box on my neighbor's porch. So I walked over to retrieve it and was told I brought it back to the shipping hub. I was heading in that direction anyway. When I asked why he didn't either text me or just walk next door, he didn't have an answer. Okay, very frustrating. It took five more days for our item to arrive. LOL. Well, on Friday afternoon, I'm working from home. I see a box is delivered to my porch. I go out to get it. See, it's his package. On the small return portion of the ship label, it says Lenovo, one day rush, and the shipping sticker says like $31.39. My neighbor, assumably, ordered a laptop by the weight of it and rushed it over. I picked it up and went straight to the shipping center after all of my errands were done. So I was walking in at 450. Didn't want to risk. They would try to re-deliver it before the end of the day. Yesterday, he comes over with the photo of the box on my front deck to ask if I have his box and that it's important. And I respond, I brought it back to be re-delivered. He looks almost enraged and says, why? I said, That's the exact same question I asked you when you did it previously. Just thought this was what you wanted going forward. LOL. He was walking down my driveway, shaking his head extra dramatically. But what's good for one should be good for all. No? Thoughts? this This is petty confetti worthy. For sure. 
Yeah, so I'm thinking on this and I'm like, okay, so um, depending on how you want to play this, you can either do the uh, I, I don't want to get into a war here and I want to show I want to show this person the way that I want them to behave instead of uh, instead of playing petty war and walked it over and been like, here's your package. They delivered it to the wrong house, thought I'd be neighborly and bring it to you. You could have done that in a petty way, too. But this this is a much more memorable lesson, right? I don't think it's going to stop neighbor from doing it. I don't think it's it's going to stop neighbor from from now. They have a war. Now it's war, right? Because, I yes, a lesson was learned here. He shouldn't have done it in the first place. But now it's war. So now anytime they do this, it's going to be send it back, send it back, send it back. And you're going to have to play that freaking game. So you're going to have to get really, really big house numbers. And then it's going to be a competition of who has bigger house numbers. It's going to be crazy. It's going to escalate in so many freaking ways. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, but I would have a, a hard time myself playing that petty game because I don't have time for it. And because I want my shit. You know what I mean? If if they send it to the wrong house, I want my neighbor to be awesome and walk it over. Which, by the way, happened yesterday. It was a target thing and uh, and they delivered it to my neighbor's house and, and doorbell ring and it's my neighbor and he's got the target box in his hand. He's like, hey, they delivered this to the wrong house and uh, my kids started opening it, but I saw it wasn't ours. And so I grabbed it and walked it over. I'm like, dude, thank you. That's that's how that's supposed to work. That's called being neighborly. That's how it's supposed to work. And we live in a neighborhood that apparently is very easy to get confused with numbers as well. So it does happen. But I mean... If you want to start the war, start the war. And apparently that's what OP did here. And again, I'm here for it. I think it's funny as hell. As long as it's not me, as long as it's somebody else, I'm here for it. If it's my stuff, I want my stuff. You know, I don't have time to play the games and to have to hunt down stuff. It's super frustrating, super frustrating. 